The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. It's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by The Kraft Foods Company makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Let us journey now to Summerfield. Summerfield, the city of homes, nestling like a pearl in the golden setting of the autumn countryside. Trees. Trees are one of the loveliest features of this lovely little town. Shimmering poplars, stately elms, giant maples lining the quiet streets. And as they turn from crimson to gold, the leaves come drifting down. And as the leaves come drifting, in each front yard we find a small boy raking, raking away for dear life. Ah, the simple joys of youth, the rich reward of living close to nature. For as he reaps the golden harvest, raking the leaves into orderly piles, ever and anon comes the playful wind and scatters them. Oh, for corn's sake! How am I going to get anywhere with this? Find where to spend Saturday. He wants the long rake, why doesn't he come out and do it himself? Well, Leroy, that was quick. Finished already? Are you kidding? Excuse me, Mr. Gilfleet. Is it all right if I clear away the dishes? Right ahead, Bertie. You're finished, aren't you, Marjorie? What? Oh, yes. Just leave the coffee, Bertie. I always like a little coffee with my morning paper. Yes, sir. You sure do. (laughs) (laughs) Now, Leroy, what seems to be the trouble? Why aren't you out raking leaves? It's the darn wind. The minute I rake them up, they blow away before I can get them in the basket. Well, uh... I need somebody to help me. Help you? That's ridiculous. All right, how would you do it? Where there's a will, there's a way, my boy. Yeah. Huh? Uh. I'll tell you what. If you finish raking up the yard by this afternoon, I may have a nice surprise for you. What? You're invited to a birthday party. Yeah? Who's? I said you'd be delighted to come, provided you finish up your work first. Yeah, yeah. Whose party? Little Craig Bullard's. What? That little punk. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was very nice of his mother to ask you. She called up a few minutes ago. That I... does it. I give up. I quit. I'm not going to any party with any kindergartners. Kid, I told her, Leroy, that you would come. Gosh, I think I might have something to say about it. I think you might have asked me. I don't have to ask you, my boy, because you're going, and that's all there is to it. Gosh, there goes my Saturday. All right, now you're going out and rake those leaves. Okay, but I need somebody to help me. Why can't Marge help me? She's not doing anything. I'm busy. Yeah, reading a book. Go rake the leaves, Leroy. (laughs) I don't see how she gets to read at the table. You'll never let me. She's right, my dear. You know the rule, no reading at the table. What about you? This is different. I'm reading the newspaper. Merely trying to keep abreast of the time. What's the book, Marjorie? The Art of Ballet Dancing. Tweet, tweet. Leroy, what did I tell you? You go out and rake the leaves. Well, I don't see why I have to be the only one that ever does any work around here. Now, that is a gross misstatement of fact. Well, if anybody ever caught you lifting a finger around here, they'd drop dead. Oh, <laughs> I'll leave it to anybody. I'll leave it to Bertie. How about it, Bertie? What's that, Leroy? Yes, Bertie, how about it? Don't I do twice as much work around here as Unc? Well, Bertie? I pass. <laughs> She's afraid to say so. She's afraid if she tells the truth, you'll fire her. Leroy. Okay, okay. Leroy, you hadn't ought to talk to your uncle like that. Just leave this to me, Bertie. Leroy didn't mean nothing, Mr. Gilson. Just leave this to me. Young man. I'm going, Uncle. You will rake the entire yard, front and back. Every inch of it. Every leaf, every twig, every pebble. All of it? All of it. He. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I'm going. Yes, by George. 
If there's one thing I demand of a boy, it's respect. Why shouldn't it? Why shouldn't I take a little? Well, take it easy. Yeah, why shouldn't I? I work hard at the office all week, trying to support everybody. And I come home here. And... Well, Marjorie? If you'll excuse me, I think I'll go upstairs. <laughs> Marjorie, this is a matter of discipline. This is... If you ask me, a man's entitled to a little rest. After he's worked hard all week. Besides, a boy ought to learn to help around the house. Acquire the proper work habits. That's important. I had to learn to work when I was a boy. Through with your coffee now, Mr. Gilsley? Yes, Bertie. What's on your mind? I didn't say nothing. No, but you're thinking something. <laughs> now, what is it? Well, I was just thinking that's an awful big yard for such a little boy to have to rake. Oh, all right, I'll rake the yard myself. Ye gods! Rake, rake, rake. Where does it get you? Like bailing water with a sieve. Sure, sure, get a little place raked clean and more of them fall down. The more you rake, the more there are. Oh, pfft, darn wind. That's right, go on, blow them all over the lot. <laughs> well? What you doing, Gilda? What does it look like I'm doing, Hooker? Baking a cake. I never thought I'd live to see the day. The great Gildersleeve actually working. I wish I'd brought my brownie. <laughs> Judge, if you have nothing better to do than scoff at honest toil, I suggest you proceed on your way. Oh, I haven't come to scoff, Gildy. I've come to admire. All I ask is to be allowed to stand here and watch you. This is something I want to tell my grandchildren about. <laughs> you optimist. Look, Judge. <laughs> judge, I have no time to waste on heavy-handed wit. You're going to hang around, grab a basket, and get to work. Don't you wish it. <laughs> Old goat. What you doing, Trock Martin? Sue. <laughs> You're about the tenth person who's come along here and asked me what I was doing, Leela. Ye gods, can't they see what I'm doing? Well, it's not that they can't see it, Throckmorton. They can't believe it. <laughs> you too? <laughs> what you gonna do with the leaves, Bannon? I suppose so. Oh, good. I love the smell of burning leaves, don't you? Makes me cough. Oh, but it's so, so romantic. Somehow burning leaves always remind me of fall. Don't they use Rock Martin remind you of fall? Naturally, that's the only time you can burn them. I declare, I don't believe you have an ounce of romance in your nature, Rock Martin. Oh, I don't know. Didn't you used to play in the leaves when you were a child? Didn't you ever get a great big pile of leaves and just fling yourself into it? Once. Well? I went right through it. <laughs> I was a little heavy in those days. <laughs> Martin, did you ever play Babes in the Woods? Babes in the Woods? How do you do that? Well, it takes two. I lie down and you cover me up with leaves. And then you pretend you're a big bear and you come crawling around looking for me. <laughs> and uh, what if I find you? Oh, you always find me. You know where you buried me. <laughs> Well, where's the game? What do I do when I find you? What do bears always do, silly? They give you a bear hug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so scary and such fun. Look, I'll show you. All right. Hey, Leela, look out. My leaves. I just finished waking those up. Oh, I beg your pardon. I mean, don't mess them up, that's all. I wouldn't think of 
are disturbing your leaves for the world, Throckmorton. Well, you don't have to get angry, Leela. Angry? Over a silly little old game like Babes in the Wood? Gracious, I don't know what you're thinking of. Well, that's good. But if you should ever feel like a game of pin the tail on the donkey, let me know. I know just where to pin it. Oh! I'll leave you to your precious leaves. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, hello, Peavy. Raking leaves, I see. Yeah, you hit it right on the head, Peavy. Well, you've got a nice day for it. It's not too hot, and on the other hand, it's not too cold. <laughs> no, just about right. That's what I say. When you come right down to it, I believe the fall of the year is just about my favorite season. That's so? Of course, winter is nice if you're prepared for it. So is spring. And then there's summer. Too true. On the other hand, you can run into bad weather. Any time at all. Yes, sir, I've seen some awful winters. Some terrible springs and falls. Uh, tell me, Mr. Gellisley, if you don't mind my inquiring. Yes? How do you come to be doing this, this... Raking. Lose a bet? Ye gods, Peavy. Is there anything so strange about this? I suppose you've never seen a man rake leaves before. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> but I will say this. I, I've never seen you rake them. What is this? Conspiracy? Who sent you over here, Peavy? Why, nobody. I, I was Somebody just... sent you over here to heckle me. Now admit it. Mr. Gildersleeve, I, I was just on my way home. Was it Hooker? Well, I'll own I did run into the judge on the way. Yeah, I knew it. Why, George, I'd like to know what this country's coming to when a man can't putter around his own front yard without getting a lot of so-called wit and a lot of free advice from every Tom, Dick, and Harry that comes down the street. Is that democracy, Peavy? Is that what we've been fighting for? Well, is it? I beg your pardon? Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you what I think it is. It's communism. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Yes, it is. It's communism. Everybody minding everybody else's business. Mr. Gildersleeve, not so long. Well, I'm ready for him. Let him come. I got a shotgun right upstairs in my bedroom closet. Let him come. Mr. Gildersleeve, nobody is coming. What's that? I say nobody is coming. Oh, no. <laughs> of course not. How did we get started on communism? I don't know. I said something about the weather. I believe I remarked that it was a nice day. Nice day for raking leaves. Yes, it is. Fine day. Well, I guess you'll want to be getting on with it. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Gilder. Uh, goodbye, Peavy. Glad you dropped by. Where's that rake? Oh! Who left that upside down? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you, Craig. I'm going to ask you to guess. Where's Leroy? I want him to play with me. Leroy? He's around someplace, I guess. I want him to play with me. Well, come to think of it, I guess he went downtown. No, no. Here he comes now. Hello, Leroy. You want to play with me? Oh, hi, Craig. No, I don't want to play. I'll see you when the party starts. I want to play now. Scram, kid. <laughs> Leroy. <laughs> Leroy, I'm surprised at you. That's no way. If Craig wants to play, we'll confound it. Play. Oh, for corn's sake. Hey, that's quite a pile of leaves you got there, Unc. Just shows what steady work will do, my boy. What are you going to do, burn them? Yeah, you got a match? What would I be doing with matches? I don't know, but I've always suspected you of carrying them. <laughs> well, I'll just have to go in the house and get one, I guess. I see you're not going to offer to. Did you get me a present, Leroy? Yeah, I got one. How much did it cost? Buck. Is that all? That's all my uncle would give me, and if you don't like the present, just give it back, that's all. What is it? None of your business. I'll bring it when I come to the party. Okay. My, mom, my mother ordered four hamburgers for every kid that's coming. Four apiece? That's what she said. I heard her. And three kinds of ice cream. Ice cream or sherbet? Ice cream. Gosh. After, summer, ma after supper, a magician is coming to do tricks. A magician? A real one? Sure, a real one. My father's going to pay him. Hey, neat. Boy, this might be a pretty good party after all. Huh? Uh, it sounds like a swell party. 
You think the magician will need an assistant? You know, somebody like me that knows his stuff. I don't know. I want to play. Sure, Craigie, old boy, let's play. What do you want to play, huh? Oh, wait, here comes Unc. Boy, now we'll have a bonfire. Hey, you boys, stand back. Here, get out of the way. I thought I told you and Craig to play. Well, we are. We were just about to start, weren't we, Craigie? We were just deciding what to play. I know what I want to do. Okay, what is it? Let's run through this pile of leaves. <laughs> I don't think that's a very good idea, Craig. I want to run through the leaves. Come on, Leroy. Gosh, I don't know. Now, you boys find something sensible to do, huh? There are plenty of nice games. I want to run through the leaves. You must not run through the leaves, Craig. I've spent all morning raking these leaves together. Come on, Leroy. Let's run through the leaves. No, I don't think we'd better, Craig. Well, I'm going to. Come on, it's fun. Don't do it, Craig. Here I come. Whee! Oh, boy, you little... Come here. Come here, you little rascal. Well, hello, Craig. Hello, Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, Bullard. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> I was just escorting little Craigie across the street. <laughs> the great Gildersleeve will be back from across the street in just a moment. Say, ladies, did this ever happen in your kitchen? Gosh, Mom, something smells awful good. Oh, boy, fresh baked bread. Right you are, Johnny. I just took some bread and rolls out of the oven. Can I have some now? Please, Mom. Well, they've got to cool off a bit first. Anyway, you like them best spread with parquet margarine. And Dad used the last bit of parquet on his breakfast toast this morning. Oh, gee, Mom. Oh, cheer up, Johnny. I phoned the grocery, and he says that the craft truck delivered some fresh parquet to his store just an hour ago. Then here I go. I'll be right back, Mom, with some parquet. Oh, boy. Fresh rolls and fresh parquet. And that's the kind of enthusiasm you'll find in millions of American homes for the fresh, delicate flavor of parquet margarine. A fine, fresh flavor that's still unmatched. Parquet is mighty nourishing, too. High in food energy and fortified with important vitamin A. And parquet is easy on your food budget. Only about half the price of costly spreads. So tomorrow, buy delicious, economical parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by the Kraft Foods Company. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Leroy has raked the leaves together again, and now his uncle thinks it's time to burn them. Hey, Uncle, can I light up the pile? Can I, I rake them up? You might light it, Leroy. The laborer is worthy of his hire. Give me a match. Here, two matches. That's all a Boy Scout is supposed to need. I'll get by with one. Just watch. Uh -huh. There. She's going, Uncle. Seems to be. Uh, why don't you light it on the other side, my boy, too, huh? Get her going faster. Good idea. Boy, she'll be roaring in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Smells good, doesn't it? Super. Hey, the wind acts like a regular bellows. Look, it's red hot. Hold the pile down with a rake, Leroy. We don't want this thing to get away from us. Okay. Boy, is that hot. Yes, sir. Why, I'll bet it... Oop, <clears throat> give me that rake. Darn wind. Hey, you better give me the rake. The pile's starting to blow away. Oh, on your toes, Leroy. Stamp it out over there. Okay, I got it. Oh, my goodness. Look out, Leroy. Get that little patch over there. I'm getting one over here. Oh, it's hot. Yeah, it's blowing across the street, Leroy. Catch it. We must let this thing spread. It's spreading. Hey, it's an old man Bullard's head. Oh, well, put it out. Gosh, his head is burning. Hey, what the devil's going on here? What do you think's going on, Bullard? We're trying to put out a fire. Yeah, in my head. Huh? Gildersleeve, that fire break cost me 50 cents a plant. If I lose Keep it... Keep your I... shirt on. We're getting it under control. Yeah, it's out. Great. Well, get back on those other places. Okay. What the devil was the idea of trying to burn leaves on a windy day in the first place? It was not windy when I started. You're crazy. It's been windy all day. Not a breath of air. Well, if my hedge had burned, I'd have called the police. I have a half a mind to call them anyway. I dare you. I'll sue you for false arrest. If you'll come down off your porch, I'll... Come on down, brother. <laughs> I wouldn't bother. Get off my property. Why, you... And another thing. 
Tell that nephew of yours he needn't come to Craig's birthday party this evening. Oh, I wouldn't let Leroy come to Craig's birthday party if he wanted to. Um. Why, even if your kid was... The coward? Well, I guess I told him. Now, Leroy, stop moping about Craig's party. It's all your own fault if you miss it. My fault? Told you it was too windy for a fire. You've been more alert. Never gotten into Bullard's hedge. What if it did? You didn't have to offer to punch him in the nose. Gosh, every time I get a chance for some fun, you manage to spoil it. Leroy, I'm sorry. If there's anything I... What are you looking at, Leroy? Just looking out the window. Is it against the rules to look out the window? No, no, of course not. I... There's a truck from the meat market. Oh? They're getting four hamburgers for each kid. <laughs> some kids wouldn't want that many, so there's sure to be some left over. <laughs> I probably could have had six. Well, well, I'm beginning to see what's bothering you, my boy. You're hungry. All that work and then that excitement putting out the fire. Maybe we can have hamburger over here, too. How'd that be, hmm? Doesn't matter what we eat. But gosh, missing all the fun. Fun? They'll probably cook the hamburgers outdoors. Regular picnic. A picnic. The very thing. We'll have one ourselves right here. Where? Right here in our cozy little parlor. We light the fire, and you and Marjorie and I will have a picnic. We'll make popcorn, toast marshmallows, and roast apples. Ever eat a roast apple? No. Nope. Best thing you ever tasted. We'll have more fun than the Bullards ever thought of having, Leroy. Bye, George. Leroy, what are you looking at now? There's the ice cream truck. <laughs> Gosh, a whole freezer. Leroy, let's look on the bright side, huh? After all, this morning, you didn't even want to go to Craig's party. This morning, I didn't know he was going to have all this stuff. Yeah. Uh. Holy cow, this is going to be the best party in years. Now, now. What am I going to do with this lousy present? You may keep it. I don't want it. Well, then throw it away. Take it back to the store and exchange it. I don't care about the present. I want to go to the party. Leroy, cheer up, huh? We're going to have a lot of fun right here. Yeah. You bet. (laughs) Marjorie! Marjorie! What is it? Come on downstairs. We're going to have a picnic. Smell those roasting apples, Leroy. Don't they smell good? I guess so. I'll be done in a minute. Time to pop the popcorn. Where is the popcorn, Marjorie? What? I said, where's the popcorn? Oh, there's the box up in the mantel. Gee, we've had that stuff for years. Oh, no matter. It's always good. (laughs) I'd like to see you take a little more interest in our picnic, my dear. We can't have any fun if you're just going to sit there reading a book. We can't have any fun anyway. (laughs) We can't have any if we don't try, my boy. Put your book away, my dear. We're going to make popcorn. Well, we can't all do it. Let Leroy do it. Leroy's going to toast marshmallows. You make the popcorn. Marshmallows. Popcorn. Here, Leroy. Here's a toasting fork. Nice long one. Here are the marshmallows. Now, Marjorie, we'll pour some corn into the popper. There. Now, in no time at all, those little kernels will be big, white, crunchy tidbits. You sound just like a radio announcer. Huh? Here. You have to shake the popper over the fire, my dear. Okay. Leroy, you take the... Leroy, what are you looking at now? The kids are starting to arrive. There's Donald Kelsey and Robert Rosenblatt. Leroy, what do you care who goes to their old party? We're having our own party here. There's Peter Fisher. There's Piggy. Stop looking out of that window, Leroy. I forbid you to look out of that window anymore. Oh, gosh, I want to see the magician. The magician. Leroy, what do you think? The roast apples are done. How about a nice roast apple, huh? I'm not very hungry. You'll be hungry when you taste this. Where's the plate? I'll pull one apple out of the fire just for you. Bertie, bring me a plate, quick. Yes, sir, right away. How's the popcorn coming along, my dear? It isn't. Huh? Well, shake it. Never get any place just holding it still. Here's a bracelet to do, please. Is that all you wanted? That's fine. Thank you, Bertie. Here, I'll have to brush the ashes off this. There. Now, Leroy, you just sink your teeth into that and tell me if you've ever tasted anything finer. Okay. Careful. Hot. Yeah. Better blow on it. Okay. (laughs) Now. Why, it tastes just like baked apples. It does? And I hate baked apples. (laughs) 
Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, we'll forget the baked apples. Let's get back to the marshmallow and the popcorn. How's it coming, Marjorie? It's dead, Uncle Mort. I think it's too old to pop. Nonsense, my dear. Here, let me give it a shake. Hmm. Devil's the matter with it. Come on, you little pop. <laughs> I'm not putting the stuff in these poppers anymore. Pour in another batch, my dear. But, Uncle Morris... Do as I say. I'm going to the door. Oh, good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Who's that? Oh, hello, Mrs. Bullard. I came over to see what's happened to Leroy. Why isn't he at Craig's party? Leroy was canceled by Mr. Bullard. <laughs> my goodness. Now, isn't that ridiculous? I couldn't believe it when Rumson told me. Of course we want Leroy at the party. Why, Craig simply adores him, and so do I. Well, he... Rumson Bullard, don't hang back there like a thief in the night. You come up here and straighten this thing out. I was just coming, my dear. <laughs> oh, uh, Hello, Gildersleeve. Hello. <laughs> well... Well, Rumson? Uh, well, uh, I'll tell you, Gildersleeve. I'm afraid I lost my temper this afternoon. No, no, Bullard. I lost mine. Well, you had reason to lose yours. I, uh, it seems to me I threatened to call the police. Mercy. He was right, Mrs. Bullard. He should have called them. No, no, no. Nonsense. <laughs> Little accident. No damage done. I'm tired of that Barbary hedge anyway. I don't like... I mean, it's a beautiful hedge. <laughs> I wouldn't have injured it for the world. Well, anyway, Gildersleeve, I'm sorry. And I do hope Leroy can change his plans and come to Craig's party. Oh, boy, can I? Oh! Just wait till I get Craigie's present. <laughs> well, I guess Leroy can arrange it, all right. Oh, I'm so glad. Here it is. All wrapped up. A box of crayons. I hope he likes it. So long, Uncle. Hey, goodbye, Leroy. Have a good time. Don't worry. Uh, say, wait a sec, will you, Mrs. Bullard? I want to tell my sister something. Say, Marge... You know, I'm going to Bullets after all. I know. Well, the only thing is, Unc worked pretty hard trying to fix up all this stale stuff over here. So, pretend you think it's fun, will you? All right. Okay. Goodbye, Marge. Goodbye, Unc. And now, a word from our sponsor, the Kraft Foods Company. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Lung. Uh, Lang. Uh, <laughs> it just happens that the sponsor's given me this time this evening, so shove over. Well, go ahead. Uh, get off the property. <laughs> Folks, the war is over, but there's still millions of our men in the service who are a long way from home. They aren't going to get home for Thanksgiving or for Christmas or for a long time after that. If we can't bring all the boys home, let's do what we can to bring a little bit of home to them. We can do that through the National War Fund which provides them with movies and entertainment and such other comforts as can be brought into camp life. Of course, the War Fund also provides for the relief of our allies abroad and for many important community needs at home. I don't know any way that you can make a dollar go farther or do more good. So when they come around to ask you to contribute, be generous, will you? Good night, everybody. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meeker. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Think of it. Here's a cheese food you can serve in a hundred delightful ways. It's Pabstet, the delicious cheddar cheese food that spreads, melts, slices, toasts to perfection. That means you can use Pabstet to pep up meals from soup right through dessert. And it's really delicious in sandwiches and appetizers, too. Pabstet helps supply the nourishing food values of milk. And it comes in two tempting varieties, golden cheddar Pabstet and pimento Pabstet. Be sure to buy Pabstet, the delicious cheddar cheese food, on your very next shopping trip. This is the National Broadcasting Company.
The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by The Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Let us descend now through the magic of atomic power to the little home of the great Gildersleeve in Summerfield. We pass down through the weathered shingles of Gildersleeve's roof through the attic where the dress form stands guard over trunks and boxes of forgotten summer clothes. On down through Gildersleeve's bedroom where his niece Marjorie is posing before the full-length mirror in a ballet skirt. Down, 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 until we come to rest at last in the Gildersleeve kitchen, where Bertie moves quietly about her kingdom. Well, Bertie, what's for supper? Hmm, smells good. If I tell you now, you won't get no surprise when you sit down and eat it. <laughs> well, all right, I'll wait. After all, Bertie, I know it'll be good. Uh, Bertie, I'd like to have something kind of special tomorrow night if we could. Company? Miss Goodwin. <laughs> uh, can we have something extra nice, huh? How are the red points? Well, sir, we're running a little ahead of ourselves as usual, but I'll dream up something. Chicken, maybe? I'll think of something. Duck? <laughs> Miss Gilsey, I don't know exactly what it'll be, but... It'll taste like red points even if it ain't. <laughs> you better stand back now while I add a few little touches for the night. Oh, uh, those little touches. All right, Bertie, I'll leave everything in your hands. No, no, Piggy, that's no good. Listen, I got the play. I figured it out on paper and it's airtight. Leroy, is this telephone conversation still going on? Uh, just a sec, Unc. Oh, Piggy, will you listen just once? It's a T formation. The ball is snapped to the quarterback. The fullback rushes over and pretends to get the ball from the quarter. Leroy, terminate the conversation. Unc, we have to settle this. Terminate the conversation. Call you later, Pig. Goodbye. You've been talking to Piggy for a half an hour, Leroy. I can't have my phone perpetually tied up by conversations between you and your little friends. It may have caused me to miss an important call. Well, how would I know you were expecting an important call? I'm not, but there's always a possibility. <laughs> And who messed up the evening paper? Messed it up. I put it all back together. Half of it upside down. If you weren't so careless, stop bouncing that football while I'm talking to you. Okay. You'd pay a little more attention to what you're doing, my boy. While you're doing it, didn't I tell you to get a haircut yesterday? You did? You know I did. You gave me an argument. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Oh, you forgot, eh? Hair down over your ears, you look like a teddy bear. Get it cut the first thing tomorrow morning, you understand? Saturday? I can't, Unc. Our team has to practice tomorrow. We play the Fair Oaks All-Stars next week. Are you going to practice all day? Well, sure. We have skull practice in the morning and field practice in the afternoon. We need it. We'll start your skull practice in the barbershop. <laughs> Is that clear? Well, sure, it's clear. Only gosh. I asked you not to bounce that football while I'm talking to you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Unc. What you've got to realize, Leroy, is that life is not all beer and Skittles. Oh, I never said it was. I never tasted beer in my life. I'm not talking about real beer. Beer and Skittles is just an expression. When I say life is not all beer and Skittles, I mean it's not all play and no work. Oh, that. Yes, that. Work, responsibility, my boy. You're getting older. You've got to realize you can't just play all day. Who's that? Oh, Marjorie. Leroy, why can't you be more like your sister? She's a girl. She... How do you like my ballet skirt, Unky? Isn't it a dream? Well, that's really a very... If you'd stop spinning around for a minute, I could tell how I like it Oh, I have to spin it. It doesn't stand out Well, stop it or you'll make yourself dizzy No, it doesn't Well, it makes me dizzy Stop, I want to talk to you <sighs> Why didn't you say so? Young lady, it's time you realize life is not just a bed of roses Or beer and Skittles, either Leroy <laughs> You watch your step, young man. Don't you just love the skirt, Unky? Don't you think it looks professional, Leroy? Yeah, it looks pretty good. It looks fine, my dear. Now go upstairs and take it off. It's time to get ready for supper. Why can't I wear this to supper? Because I don't consider it suitable. But I don't see why. Won't anybody around here do as I say? All I get is arguments. Have you children no conception of obedience? Oh, sure. Oh, Unky, when you're unreasonable. I am never unreasonable. Oh, brother. <laughs> 
Did you say something, Leroy? I didn't mean to. I hope I won't have to warn you again. I want both of you children to understand that what I want around here is a little obedience. From now on, when I say jump, I want you to jump. Is that clear? Yeah, yes. Very well. I'll go upstairs and change into something more ladylike for supper. Oh, all right. Ladylike. Leroy, you ready for supper? Yeah, I just happened to wash. Look. Amazing. I want you to be careful of your table manners at supper. Miss Goodwin is coming to dinner tomorrow, and I'd like you to make a good impression on her for once. Don't worry. I always get along with her swell. Hey, Leroy! Somebody calling you? Yeah, it's Donald Kelsey. Leroy! Well, answer him. What? Oh! <laughs> Don't shout in my face. Go to the door. I'm going. No, Leroy. It's too near supper time. Just play in here till it's ready. But I... Okay. I can't come out, Donald. Dunk won't let me. You see, Unc? I was obedient. I'm glad you remembered. Even if for only this once. Uh, uh. Well, Marjorie, you look much more suitable for the table. I better go upstairs and get ready myself. Try to stay clean. they will supper, Leroy. Don't worry about me. Say, Marge, you want to see the trick play I invented? It's practically a sure touchdown. You want to see it? No. Oh, come on. I'll let you be the star. Look, you're the halfback and I'm the quarter. You're way out at the end of the line, see? I'm not playing. I'll be a sport for once. Look, the center snaps the ball to me. I fade back a little like this. The fullback rushes over this way and pretends to grab the ball, and I run around and shoot you a quick pass. Look out! Oh! The base! She... <laughs> For corn's sake, Marge, of all the passes to mud. Well, Leroy, which vase, may I ask? On the mantelpiece. It was an accident, Dunk, honest. I'm delighted to hear that. So it was not vandalism, merely an accident, eh? Do you realize that vase was a piece of genuine California pottery? It was? <laughs> yes, it was. I bought it in Chicago. It cost me two dollars and a half. Gosh. How did it happen, Leroy? an accident, Dunk. It wasn't Marge's fault. She just didn't catch the ball, that's all. I've told you not to play football in the parlor, young man. But when Donald wanted me to come out just now, you said to play inside. I thought you meant it would be okay. That mistake will cost you your allowance till the vase is paid for, young man. What? Every penny. What's more, starting tomorrow, you'll earn your allowance. You'll work in the backyard here every Saturday till your debt is paid. Um... That will do, my boy. Go get a broom and dustpan and clean up this mess. Okay. Gosh, I'll be broke the rest of my life. I'm working, too. Where's the br- broom and dustpan, Bertie? In the closet. What happened? That little skinny jaw on the mantel? Yeah. I knew it would go someday. <laughs> he claims it's worth two fifty, and I have to pay for it. Mm, that's a lot of money. You tell on me. Have to work for it, too. That's the hardest way to get money there is. <laughs> Yeah, I hate it. Let's see, at 25 cents a week, I'll have to work every Saturday for 10 weeks. That's right. A couple of weeks left in October, four weeks in November, four weeks in December. i got to work from now till Christmas, and I won't get a cent for it. <laughs> Come on, Leroy. Don't make me drag you in by the coat collar. I'm coming. Good morning, Floyd. Hi, Commissioner. Hi, Leroy. Hello, Floyd. I want you to give this young man a haircut, Floyd. He's considerably overdue. Say, he is at that. Leroy, you know, it's kids like you that make it tough for barbers to make a living. I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm only kidding. Climb right up in the chair. That's the boy. Well, Commissioner, did you lose any money on the series? I'm not a betting man, Floyd. Although, if I had made a bet, it would have been on the Tigers. Perfectly clear they had the better team. Yeah. Well, second guessing is cheap, as a fellow says. I knew it all along. Okay, okay. I wish you'd let me in on it. Could have saved myself a bundle. Did he let you in on it, Leroy? Ha! <laughs> would you mind getting down to business, Floyd? I haven't got all day. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner. I didn't know you were going to referee this thing. 
Why don't you sit down? I might as well. Get going, though, will you? Doesn't have to be a masterpiece, you know. The boy's special, I know. That's right. With no smelly stuff on it. Okay. I'm out of here in no time. Yes, yes. Hey, Floyd, did you hear the Army Wake Forest game last week? Did I? Never missed a play. Army's got a super team this year, haven't they? Best in the country, that's all. Best football team in the country. Glenn Davis. And Doc Blanchard. Yes, sir. Those two fellas play a whole lot of football. Floyd, you haven't cut a single hair. Starting in right now, Commissioner. I guess Navy's about the only team the Army has to worry about, huh, Floyd? Well, Navy's got a good team. Pat Jenkins plays a whole lot of football. And Clyde Scott. Yeah. Clyde Scott of Smack Over, Arkansas. Yep, that's where he comes from. <laughs> Smack Over, Arkansas. <laughs> Floyd. What's the matter, Commissioner? I'm chopping away here all the time. <laughs> Must you talk? If you must talk, does it have to be about nothing but football? What's the matter with football? About as clean a game as you'll find. Of course, there's angles to it. <laughs> I've been trying to interest Leroy in a few things I consider more important than football. Oh, why didn't you say so? Read any good books lately, Leroy? Nah. Well, that takes care of that. <laughs> Tracy? Read him every day. Gosh, I thought he was going to catch up with Itchy there yesterday, but now it don't look so good. <laughs> but, uh, of course, he'll get him eventually. It'd be a big surprise if he don't. I notice every time Tracy's really stuck, the crooks start to fight about the money. You ever notice that? No, but that's right. If Breathless Mahoney hadn't fought with B.O. plenty about the money, Tracy never would have... Hey, gods! <laughs> Baseball, football, comic strips. I can't control your conversation, Floyd, but by George, I don't have to listen to it. Here. Here's for the haircut. No smelly stuff, remember, or I won't be able to stand him around the house. Okay, but gee, Commissioner... And Leroy, I... you get home as soon as you finish. Remember, you got a man's work to do today. Huh. Your uncle's a nice fellow, Leroy, but he's got peculiar tastes. Yeah, I guess so. What was that about a man's work, he just said? Well, I have to work every Saturday till I get 2 for something I busted. Oh. So, uh... Take your time, huh, Floyd? <laughs> yeah, I'll have to. <laughs> you got a lot of hair. <laughs> <laughs> Say, um, how'd it be if we catch a little of that Michigan Army game while I'm working? Oh, boy, super. I figure that'll be the best game of the day, don't you? Yes, sir. Those Ann Arbor boys play a whole lot of football. <laughs> <laughs> You look better. Almost human, in fact. No kidding, Uncle Floyd really knows his stuff about sports. Mm -hmm. And not just the major sports, either. He knows all about lacrosse and bowling and, and water polo. He remembers scores way back to 1930. Let it be a warning to you, my boy. Fill up your brain with football scores, and you may wind up a barber with one chair in your shop. <laughs> Leroy Piggy called you. He did? Oh. Uh, say, Unc. Yes? I... Guess Piggy was calling me for practice this afternoon. You don't say. Yeah. Yeah, it's awful important, Dunk. It's practically our last chance before a very important game. My boy, I don't seem to have made myself very clear to you. Yesterday you broke a valuable and artistic vase, did you not? Yeah. I'm trying to teach you something for which you'll be grateful to me all the rest of your life. Oh, I've learned it already, Unc. And boy, am I grateful. <laughs> I'm afraid you haven't learned it, or you wouldn't be asking if you could play football this afternoon. But I have learned it. I know I have to pay for the busted vase. Okay, I'll pay. The responsible man puts first things first, my boy. If you had really learned your lesson, you wouldn't dream of either rest or recreation till that debt was paid. Well, if I work this Saturday, can I have next Saturday off to play in the game? Sorry, my boy. No Saturdays till you've paid the last penny of restitution. It's for your own good. Okay. Okay, I'll go to work. But if I ever have a kid, I won't make him work. And if I ever have a house, I won't have any crummy vases in it from California. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. 
Mr. Lang, have you seen the new parquet margarine advertisement that's in the magazines now? Um, I've seen it. Why, you could frame it and hang it on the wall. It is a beautiful picture. Everything looks so colorful and appetizing. A pot of steaming baked beans, two slices of luscious brown bread. And that pat of rich-looking parquet margarine. Well, of course, that's what makes the picture complete. As you probably know, parquet margarine helps to make any meal complete. Served with bread, rolls, pancakes, and waffles, parquet margarine adds the final flavor touch. Well, it's the best I ever tasted. Always so fresh, so sweet, and so that's, delicate. And that's what makes parquet margarine an all-American favorite. Because parquet's fresh, delicate flavor is still unmatched. And it's economical, too. Only about half the price of costly spreads. Getting back to that advertisement, Mr. Lang. Oh, yes. You'll find it says that parquet margarine is preferred by millions to any other brand because it tastes so good. So treat your family to a spread that's really delicious. Buy economical parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by the Kraft Foods Company. Now let's return to our story. After the exertion of eating, Gildersleeve usually likes to repair to the parlor, relax for a few moments, and enjoy a cigar while planning his next move. Mm. Ate too much. As often as not, the next move is one he hadn't planned. He unbuttons his vest, slides down in his chair. Time passes. An arm hangs limp. The noble head falls upon the massive chest. Cigar ashes. Cigar ashes fall upon the vest. Gildersleeve is at peace. (laughs) But not for long. Oh, my goodness. Bertie! You know, I'm trying to get a little sleep, so I'll be bright and sparkling when Eve comes. Did you call Mr. Gilbert? Yes. You don't happen to be going upstairs, do you? Well, I didn't exactly have it in mind, but I guess I could arrange it. Will you tell Marjorie I'd like to speak to her, please? Yes, sir. Uh, oh, sounds like she's coming down, Miss Gilbert. Then never mind. Something's got to be done, Uncle Mort. Something's just got to be done. That's just what I had... It's impossible. It's simply impossible. First it speeds up and then it slows down. What does? The phonograph. We'll just have to get a new one, that's all. This one is impossible. It doesn't seem to occur to you, young lady, that it isn't as easy as all that. Phonographs cost money. Uncle Mort, is my dancing important or not? Well, certainly. I guess so, only... Well, then? Confounded Marjorie, you're as bad as Leroy. You have no idea the value of money. Kindly do not compare me with Leroy. (laughs) <laughs> well, it's true anyway And I'll say this for Leroy At least he isn't banging around upstairs Making a racket while people are trying to get some much needed rest I was not banging around At least he's outside working That's what you think I know he's outside working because I told him to Well, isn't he? By George, if he isn't <laughs> Why, that little... Where is he? I distinctly told him Where did he go? If he's over at Piggy's playing football <laughs> Hold it, boys. Time out. Hold it, hold it. Hang on to the ball there, Piggy. Just a minute. Well, Gildy. Hello, Judge. Can't you join the game? No. What are you doing here with those knickerbockers on? The boys needed a referee, and I was happy to oblige. At your age. You haven't seen my nephew, have you? Leroy? No, why? Well, I suspected he might be over here. You're sure? I told you, Gildy, I've not seen the boy. What are those kids hiding over there? They're not hiding anything. They're in a huddle. Huddle, muddle. If I find that kid, I'll fan his little tupper. Any particular reason, Gildy, or are you just feeling ugly? Certainly I have a reason. The boy broke a valuable vase. Well, boys will be boys, Gildy. You understood them a little better. Or... Listen, you old goat, have you ever had a boy of your own? Have you? No, but I've had the use of one. <laughs> then I'd suggest you get to know him better. Get out and play with him the way I'm doing. It'll do you good. Make you feel like a kid again and possibly improve your disposition. What? Listen, you old elderly ragamuffin. Hey, Judge. When I need any advice about the care and feeding of children... Sorry, Gildy, you're holding up the game. One side, please. (laughs) Tension all, recess over, resume scrimmage. Resume scrimmage, oh, brother. Ball, please, Piggy. 
Amos Alonzo Hooker. <laughs> I wonder if there's any use asking Peavy. Leroy might have sneaked in here for a soda or something. Trouble is, if I go in, Peavy will talk my arm off. I've wasted enough time already. No, I guess I'll just go home and wait. Oh, what's that he's got in his window? Well, I'll be darned. A regular little cannon. Ooh, cute. <laughs> see, Leroy would love that. I might just drop in and see about it. Not so long till Christmas. Well, well Mr. Gellisley. <laughs> Hi, Peavy. Uh, what's the price of that little cannon you've got in your window? That little cannon? Yes. In your window there? Yes. It's not for sale. <laughs> what do you mean? It's in your window, isn't it? Yes, it is, but it's just a display. Well, what do you have it in your window for if it's not for sale? Just a service to our customers. People come along, they like to look at it. What kind of service is that? You get me all excited. I come in here, I want to buy it, and you tell me it's not for sale. It's not. Then take it out of the window. Well, no, I... Can't. All I can say is, Peavy, I don't know what kind of a drugstore you think you're running. Well, I don't sell cannons. <laughs> well, then don't advertise them. The whole thing is very misleading, Peavy, if not unethical. It's misrepresentation. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> no decent drugstore would display anything in its window that it wasn't willing to sell. Have you seen Beckman's window? Certainly. See the big plaster foot he's got in there with the bunions that light up? Well, yes. Have you tried to buy that? <laughs> well, ye gods, who'd want to buy it? Same thing. All right, keep your cannon. I'll give you two dollars for it. Mr. Gellers, babe, I... It's can... not for myself, Peavy. I want to buy it for Leroy. For a little boy's Christmas, Peavy. The one thing that'd make him happy. The one thing that it... Wait a minute. What is it? I forgot. What? I'm mad at Leroy. <laughs> oh, my goodness, that must be Miss Goodwood. I I'll go. Now, take it easy, Bertie. Let's keep our heads here. Marjorie, remember what I told you. You've told me so many things, I can't possibly remember them. Well, just try to make a good impression, that's all. Good evening, Miss Goodwin. Good evening, Bertie. How are you? Just fine, Miss Goodwin. Take your thing. Thank you. Where is that Leroy? Seven o'clock and he's not home yet. If I lay my hands on him, I'll... Oh, hello, Eve. <laughs> good evening, Throckmorton and Marjorie. Hello, Miss Goodwin. Oh, this is so nice. Turned quite chilly out, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Better come and stand by the fire, Eve, to warm up. Shove over, Marjorie. Excuse me, Mr. Gillespie. Uh, yes, Bertie? You want to wait any longer for Leroy, or shall I just go ahead and put it on the table? Yes, where is Leroy? <laughs> Nobody knows. We haven't seen him all afternoon. Now, my dear, I imagine Leroy just went down to the public library and got so interested in some good book, he's forgotten what time it is. Are you kidding? <laughs> Now, oh, Marjorie. <laughs> well, it doesn't sound very plausible, Throckmorton. Not on a Saturday afternoon. Not if I know boys. Well, tell you the truth, Eve, I'm afraid that I'm going to face a little disciplinary problem with Leroy when he arrives. Miss Gillsleeve, I don't like to butt in, but... Yes, Bertie? You don't think maybe Leroy ran away, do you? Ran away? What makes you say that, Bertie? Well, I don't know. He was acting kind of strange this morning. Going around talking to himself and slamming doors. She's right, Uncle Mort. Eve, you don't think he'd run away, do you? You know about boys. Do you think he'd run away? Oh, of course not. Boys never run away from home without a reason. What possible reason could Leroy have for wanting to run away? Plenty. Uncle Mort bawled the living daylights out of him. Now, Marjorie, that's not true. I may have reasoned with your brother a little. Ha! <laughs> After all, he was a little careless. Well, I can't imagine your uncle being harsh with a boy, Marjorie. You should hear him. Marjorie, we have company. <laughs> Well, it's true, isn't it? He's gone, isn't he? And he hasn't been home all afternoon, and you don't know where he is now. Oh, my dear, I don't think it's anything to be worried about. You're not worried, maybe, because he isn't your brother. You don't know him the way I do. He may be a bum, and I could kill him most of the time, but if anything happened to him, I'd never forgive you. Never. That settles it. I'm going to call the police. I'll start a search. Throckmorton. Huh? Throckmorton, just a moment. Aren't we getting awfully excited about very little? No, she's right, Eve. I lost my head. I said terrible things to the boy. I've driven him from his home. I don't blame him for running away. If he'll only come back, I'll never speak harshly to him again. Bertie, my overcoat. Hi, everybody. Leroy. Leroy. Leroy, where the devil have you been? Three guesses. Oh, hello, Miss Clemens. Good evening. 
Good evening, Leroy. You were very nearly late for dinner, my boy. Where have you been? At the library? Nope, the bowling alley. The bowling... <laughs> Leroy, Eve, I don't want you to think that I allow him to hang around such places. I wasn't hanging around. You know very well that I disapprove of such behavior, young man. All right, you told me I had to pay for the vase I busted, didn't you? Well, that was to teach you the value of money, my boy. And you told me I had to earn it all myself, two bucks and a half. I did that for your own good. I know it seems a little tough, but... You've had to give up your Saturdays week after week. Perhaps you'll realize how hard it is to earn two dollars and a half. Sure, I know already. Here, Ron, two bucks and a half. <laughs> Leroy, where did you get all this money? Earned it. How? Floyd picks me up down at the bowling alley. Pin boy. Nine cents a line and a buck and a quarter in tips. Not bad, huh? Better than you pay. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Miss Goodwin. Hi, Leroy. Well, everybody, what do you say we eat? I'm starved. After you, Marge. After you, Miss Goodwin. Thank you, Leroy. You see, Unc, it's not so hard to make a buck if you use your head. I give up. We'll be hearing more from the great Gildersleeve in just a few moments. Home is just about the coziest place there is on a Sunday evening. And with our family, one of the most delightful meals of the week is Sunday night supper. I'll bet that's true with your family, too. Somebody always says, let's have waffles or French toast. And, of course, you know what I'm going to say next. The one thing that makes those waffles or slices of French toast taste so good is delicious parquet margarine. The test of a good spread, you know, is the delicacy of its flavor and aroma when served with hot foods. Now, that's why parquet margarine is a favorite of millions, because its flavor is unmatched by any other brand. So here's a friendly suggestion. If you want to make next Sunday's supper of waffles or French toast a real treat of the week, top them off with Flavor Fresh Parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by Kraft. <laughs> Two fifty every Saturday, fifty-two weeks a year. That's over a hundred and fifty bucks. Boy, I'll be rich. Well, you're your own boss, of course, my boy. But there's something I think you're forgetting. What's that? Well, money isn't everything. For instance, there are family ties. You should be glad to work for your old uncle now and then, even if it pays less than some other things. I'm sorry, Uncle. I can't afford it. You'll do it whether you can afford it or not. I thought you said I was my own boss. Don't you believe it? Now go to bed. Good night, everybody. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Now, a wonderful help in menu planning. It's Pabstet, the delicious cheddar cheese food that's so nourishing, so easy to digest, so easy to serve in a hundred appetizing ways. Pabstet spreads, slices, toasts to perfection for sandwiches and snacks. And Pabstet melts into a luscious golden cheese sauce to pour over tasty dishes of macaroni, rice, eggs, and fish. Yes, there are a hundred delightful ways to enjoy Pabstet's rich, mellow cheddar cheese flavor. So buy both varieties of this delicious cheese food, golden cheddar Pabstet, and Pimento Pab Step. This is the National Broadcasting Company. The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Now let us see what fate has in store for The Great Gildersleeve. Fate moves in mysterious ways. Here he comes now, in the uniform of the United States Postal Service. Yeah. So is Christmas. Yeah? Who is it, Bertie? Who is it, Bertie? Who is it, Bertie? Uh, special Bertie? delivery. I got a letter for Special it. delivery? Special delivery? Special delivery, huh? Oh, I'll be right down. No, 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 no. This is for the party next door. Only she ain't home, so I, I thought if you wouldn't mind giving it to her. What's it for, Bertie? Is it for me? No, it's for Miss Ransom. Oh, well, she doesn't live here. She lives next door. Yeah, I know. I was just over there, but she ain't home, well, so... Me by any chance? No, Leroy, it's for Miss Ransom. Oh, well, you got the wrong place, bud. She lives next door. I know. I was just over there. Be right there. You sign for it, Marjorie. No, oh, nobody don't need sign for it. Uh, uh, all I need is... Eh? Well, I wonder who could be... Oh, this is for Mrs. Ransom. I'm afraid you've got the wrong address, my friend. Mrs. Ransom lives next door, 269. <laughs> right across the lot there. Hey, look. Give me back the letter. I'll take it back to the office. He was just over there, Mr. Gillsleeve. Miss Ransom ain't home. In that case, why don't you leave the letter here and let us give it to her when she comes home? <laughs> That's all I'm asking. Well, all right. Cheapers. Why doesn't the man make himself clear? The letter on the mantel, Leroy. Dinner in about ten minutes, Miss Gillsleeve. All right, Bertie. You better get ready for dinner, Leroy. I am. Leroy, I said put the letter on the mantel. That's what I'm doing. You were doing nothing of the kind. You were holding the envelope up to the light. I saw you. We don't read other people's mail, my boy. It's not only bad manners, it's a criminal offense. Besides, it isn't done. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Could you make out anything? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Paper's too thick. Oh, uh, put it on the mantel, and I'll take it over to Mrs. Ransom after dinner. I saw your lights on, so I knew you were home. I just this minute got in. Do come inside. You're letting in the cold. Well, it's pretty late, but if you insist. Just came over to bring you a letter, Leela. Letter? Uh-huh. The postman left it while you were out. Special delivery. Here. Now, who could be writing to me? Spe- Throckmorton! Oh, Throckmorton, I'm going to have to sit down. Oh? What's the matter? It's from Lightfoot. Who's Lightfoot? An Indian? No. <laughs> told you about him, Lightfoot Dupree, the man who was engaged to my very best friend, Lula Jean Carruthers, down in Savannah. Oh, him. I feared this, Throckmorton. I feared it from the very start. Feared what? You don't even know it's in the letter. I know only too well. It's happened. They've broken off, and Lula Jean will never forgive me. Never. As if anything I could have done would have prevented it. I don't know what this is all about, Leela. You go down south and deliberately fall in love with some Indian who's already He in... is not an Indian, Throckmorton. <laughs> He's a gentleman and a very charming one. And I didn't say I'd fallen in love with him. You did so. I said we were irresistibly attracted to each other. <laughs> That's different. Different? Yeah, how? Well, anyway, I knew it would never do, him being engaged to my very best friend and all, so we made a pact. We agreed not to see each other or even write to each other for a month. And at the end of that time, if we still felt the way we did, well... Well? Well, the month is up, and here's a letter from Lightfoot. Uh, Throckmorton, would you think it terribly rude of me if I read it? No, go ahead. I won't look. <laughs> I know it isn't good manners, but I'm so excited. You're sure you don't mind? No. Well, then. My dear Leela. Hmm. Leela, how do you know that this follows? Just a minute, Throckmorton, just a minute. <laughs> oh, it's just as I feared. He's coming up, Throckmorton. He's coming to Summerfield. Oh, I just knew. I mean, I wouldn't have had this happen to Lula Jean for the world, but, uh, well, 
There's no use crying over spilt milk, is there? You mean this fellow is actually... He says he's arriving tomorrow on a business trip. That's likely. Just happens to be coming to Summerfield on business, all the way from Georgia. Ha! Monkey business. <laughs> Throckmorton, you mustn't talk like that. You'd be crazy about Lightfoot. I'm dying to have you meet him. Uh, why don't you come over tomorrow night when he's here? I have to go bowling. Oh, please, Throckmorton. You could give up your bowling just this once. Please, for Leela. What do I want to meet him for? Because I want you to. You just want to annoy me, that's all. Throckmorton, how can you say that? Say you can't. Confound it, Leela. Are you really in love with this fellow? I don't know for sure, Throckmorton. It's it's so hard to be certain. I won't know till I see him again, I guess. But I will say this. He's one of the most charming gentlemen I've ever met. <laughs> and talented, too. What's so talented about him? Oh, everything. To begin with, he's a divine dancer. Simply divine. You say that about everybody, except me. <sighs> And he carries on the most delightful conversation all the time. Whispers little things in your ear. Man sounds like a gigolo. <laughs> Is he musical? Musical. Does he play the piano? Can he sing? Well, I've never heard him sing. Ah, Leela, that's no kind of a fellow for you. You'd never be happy with him. What makes you say that? Remember all the fun we used to have together, you and I, Leela? When you'd play the piano and I'd sing. I remember very well. But a girl can't live on her memories. How'd, how'd you like it if I'd sing for you now, huh? Oh, Throckmorton, you get me so confused. You know how I am when you sing. <laughs> Come on, Leela. You play for me, huh? Oh, what's the use, Rockmorton? All that belongs to the past. It's dead. Why drag it up? Oh, come on. Just one song. For all Lang Syne, huh? Should old acquaintance be forgot? Should it, huh? And never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot? And days of all lang syne. I always cry when I hear that song. You do? I know. I know one you like. Here's one that'll cheer you up. Come on, you have to play this one. Play what? You sit right down there. What do you want me to play? Our song. Remember? Speak to me of love And say what I'm longing to hear Tender words of love Repeat them again, I implore you Speak to me of Leela Lightfoot, I mean Throckmorton Oh! Do you want to break the piano? Yes! The great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. In the meantime, I'd like to ask this lady a question. Which do you like best for breakfast, toast or sweet rolls? Why, I prefer toast. And I like sweet rolls. Now, uh, what's your choice for dinner, bread or muffins? Oh, I'll take muffins. And I'd rather have bread. <laughs> we just can't seem to agree, can we? Mm, I think we can. At least we can agree that it takes a good spread to bring out the flavor of all kinds of bread. Yes, I'll agree with you on that. By the way, have you ever tasted parquet margarine? Yes, I have. Do you like it? Oh, I certainly do. And so do I. There, you see, we agree again. And that's something on which millions of people agree. Parquet margarine is preferred by millions to any other brand because it's still unmatched for fresh, sweet, delicate flavor. If you haven't tried parquet... Buy some soon and discover how good it tastes on bread, toast, and rolls. And remember, parquet is only about half the price of costly spreads. 
Be sure to ask your food dealer for Parquet, the spread that tastes so good. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by Kraft. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Weary from a hard day at the water department, he has trudged home through the autumn twilight, tripped over Leroy's bicycle on the walk in front of his house, and finally reached the sanctuary of his parlor. Excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve, did Judge Hooker catch up with you? Judge Hooker? No, Bertie. Was he looking for me? Yes, sir. He said he might stop by. You didn't invite him to supper, did you, Bertie? No, sir. I saw my chance, but I refrained. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Bertie. Well, I'll handle him if he comes in. But let's not delay the meal now. When it's ready, just blow the whistle. Okay, Miss Gilfrey. Won't be long now. Oh, Leroy. How many times have I asked you not to slam the door? Sorry, Unc. Look, we got company. What? Evening, Gildy. Oh, it's you. Evening, Marjorie. You're looking very pretty. Thank you, Judge. Don't get up, Gildy. I wasn't going to, Judge. <laughs> I hope I'm not disturbing you. I figured you wouldn't be doing anything. This is the hour of the day I like to spend with the children. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's a little matter I'd like to discuss with you, uh, privately. You mean you want me to send the children out of the room? I try to run this family democratically, Horace. The parlor belongs to them as much as to anyone else. Then perhaps we could step into your study. Uh, uh Leroy, mind you, you go into my study for a few minutes, will you? And make it snappy. Okay, all right. You'll have to make it snappy, too, Judge. We're reading in just a minute. I'll make it snappy. Gildy, uh, doubtless you recall we had the pleasure a year or so ago of acting as co-signers on a note of Leela Ransom's. I remember. What about it? As her financial advisor and attorney, naturally, I've tried to arrange her affairs so that she'd be in a position to pay the loan off. Well, how's she doing? She's got the money, but now she doesn't want to use it to pay off the note. She wants to invest in television stock. Oh, for goodness sake. Gildy, you don't know what I go through with Leela. She's a lovely creature and all that, but by ginger. Well, I'll speak to her about this. Oh, if you would, Throckmorton, I'd be grateful. The hours I spend explaining things to her... Uh, she isn't in any financial difficulty, is she, Horace? Well, she's not too... Oh, well, she'd be all right, except she's continually doing something foolish. When can you see her, Gildy? I'm afraid she's going to plunge into television any minute if we don't stop her. Well, I'm seeing her this evening, Judge, as a matter of fact. Although I don't know how easy it'll be to bring this thing up. Why not? Well, she's got this southerner coming to see her. Wants me to meet him for some reason. Southerner? Yeah, some flame of hers passing through town. Is this fellow interested in her? I suppose so. He's come all the way up here. Maybe you'll marry her. I wish the dickens somebody would marry her and straighten her out instead of me. Well, I don't think it's your job to... <laughs> I don't think it's your job to find the man. You're not jealous, are you, Gildy? No, you old goat, I'm not jealous. <laughs> but that's no reason to marry her off to every Tom, Dick, and Harry that comes through town. I don't see you marrying her. You're just a dog in the manger, that's what you are. <laughs> I'm no dog, you dog. <laughs> and don't call this house a manger. Oh, you make me sick. Well, go on over there and hang around. It won't do you any good. What do you mean by that? I'll bet Leela wants this fellow, and I'll bet she married. That's what you think. I'll show him a thing or two. By the time he... Excuse me! Huh? Oh, yes, Bertie? You told me to whistle. Oh, well, I didn't hear it, though. <laughs> Sorry, Judge. Supper. I'd ask you to stay, only we're a little short tonight. <laughs> I've dined. Thank you. Uh. Good night. Lothario. Good night, you money-grubbing old Cupid. <laughs> Pretty quiet in there. I wonder if Dupree's here yet. Uh, here she comes. Well, I did... Oh, 
Oh, Throckmorton. <laughs> yeah, hello, Leela. You're early, aren't you? I don't know, am I? Well, of course you are. I said 8 o'clock, and it's only about 20 minutes off. Gracious, I'm hardly dressed. Oh, well, as long as I'm here. No, Throckmorton. I've got to finish dressing. Well, I'll wait downstairs here. No, please. I... Throckmorton, I just thought of something. Why, it's the luckiest thing you came early. Yeah, why is it? <laughs> I just remembered I haven't got a drop of nail polish in the house. I wonder if you'd mind running down to the drugstore for me. <sighs> nail polish? That takes hours to put on. Well, it's not for tonight. I'll need it first thing in the morning. Be a lamb now, Throckmorton. Run down and get me a bottle. By the time you get back, I'll be all dressed and everything. Well, uh, what color? Mr. Peavy will know, Throckmorton, but hurry. I wonder if she's trying to get rid of me. Oh, hello, Mr. Jellison. Hello, Peavy. You got any nail polish? I'm in a hurry. Nail polish? I believe we have. What color? I don't know what color. Any color. Is uh, this for yourself or for a friend? <laughs> for a friend. What do you think? Well, I wondered. A lady, I presume. It's for Mrs. Ransom. Oh. She didn't like the polish she bought yesterday? Did she buy polish yesterday? Certainly, I sold it to her myself. Confound it. I knew she was sending me down here in a wild goose chase. Makes me so darn mad. What makes women behave the way they do, Peavy? I don't know, Mr. Gillespie, unless it's men. You... <laughs> Grab me some nail polish, will you, Peavy, and let me get out of here. Yes, sir. What color did you say? I didn't. What colors have you got? Well, they run the gamut all the way from pink to rose. Here's the chart. Well, pick any color. I can't tell one from another. In between you and me, neither can I, but... <laughs> women come in here and they study over the chart and they ask my advice. And I give it to them. <laughs> Peavy, you're a cynic. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Just practical. Yes. Yeah, how about this color, Mr. Gildersleeve? That's a nice color. Goes with everything. <laughs> Bright enough for evening, not too bright for daytime. You can wear it. You've already it's... told me, Peavy, that you know nothing about it, so spare me the sales talk. I guess the color won't scare anybody. Wrap it up. Yes, sir. Need any razor blades today? Nope. Tooth powder and mouthwash? No. I have a special on shaving lotion. Peavy, will you hurry it up? All I want is a nail polish, and I don't even need that. Just wrap it up and don't talk. Don't say a word. Well, well, I won't. Well, don't. Well, I won't. <laughs> Trouble with you is you've always got to have the last word. Well, no, I wouldn't. There you go. He got. <laughs> but she never thought I could make it so fast. Well, I do. Here I am again, Leela. Oh. Yeah. Uh. Rock Martin, did you go to the drugstore? Sure I did. Here's a nail polish. Oh, yes, thank you. Well, do come in. I'm freezing. Great. Where's, uh, what's his name, Dupree? I don't know. I've been expecting him ever since 7.30. Uh, uh, sit down, won't you? You bet. Why don't we sit on the couch? Uh, I don't think I'll sit down just yet, Rock Martin. I'll just stand here by the fire. Hmm. You look nice there, too. Firelight gleams in your hair. Puts color in your cheeks. What did you say? I said the firelight gleams in your hair, puts color in your cheeks. Oh, thank you, honey. <laughs> matter with you, Leela? Don't you feel well? Why, yes, Rockmorton. I feel fine. You're acting kind of strange, as if I wasn't here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just absent-minded. Now, tell me all about what you've been doing today. Well, let's see. This morning... Oh, that must be right for it. Huh? Sit right there, Rockmorton. You hear Leela, you sure are a lovely sight to a lonesome stranger. Oh, thank you, Conscious. I salute you with a kiss I brought all the way from Savannah. How do they do it? <laughs> oh, you like for too much, and I've got company. Come in, darling, just put your bags here in the hall. There. Now come in here and meet Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, 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 well? Lightfoot, 
I want you to meet one of my oldest and best friends in Summerfield, Throckmorton Gildersleeve. This is Lightfoot Dupree, Throckmorton. Uh, glad to know you, Mr. Dupree. Mr. Gildersleeve, it's an honor and a pleasure to make your acquaintance, sir. Uh, I just know you two boys are going to like each other a lot. Don't you think so? Oh, sure. <laughs> Oh, the, the only thing we could possibly fight over would be you, Leela. Well, I won't have it. I want you to be good friends. Uh, Lightfoot, did I tell you about Mr. Gildersleeve when I was down home? He's our water commissioner here in Summerfield. Water commissioner? Mm-hmm. My land, Leela, I hadn't realized you were moving in such important political circles. I'm just a servant of the people, Mr. Dupree. <laughs> But we've got a nice little water department, if I do say so myself. 10,000 domestic subscribers and between two and 300 business and industrial installations. You don't say. Well, you must be in a position to know pretty well what's going on around here. Well, I... Uh... Lightfoot, you haven't said a word about what's going on down in Savannah. Didn't you bring me any in you? Uh, well, now, honey, let me recollect. Uh, I suppose you heard about the storm. Mm, everybody wrote me about that. But in general, the weather's been perfect. And then, of course, since the war has been over, business has been picking up right nicely. Oh, business. Tell me about the party. Uh, what business are you in, Mr. Dupree? Uh, Lightfoot is applying to Throckmorton. Ple- oh, pardon me. Uh... I'm branching out a little, though, Leela. You know, Mr. Gildersleeve, the South is processing a good portion of its cotton these days. You don't say. Yes, sir. <laughs> the South is becoming a great industrial area. You Yankees will have to step, first thing you know. Well, competition is the life of trade. But remember, we've got the know-how up here. Oh, you have indeed, sir. But we're learning. Why the price of a yard of cotton processed... Oh, hush is... up, Lightfoot. I declare you're talking just like a Yankee yourself. Why, Leela, honey. Uh, tell Throckmorton about some of the parties we have down home, Lightfoot. He's never heard of the kind of parties we have. Well, now, wait a minute, Leela. I've been on some pretty good parties. So have you. What about the hayride? Right here in Summerfield. Oh, I know. Some of them have been all right. But up here, there's nothing gay and spontaneous and reckless about a party. Why, down home, you might ask six or eight people for supper and wind up with 20 people staying for two days. Sounds inconvenient to me. <laughs> oh, you see, Lightfoot, that's the trouble with the people up north. Well, Leela, we used to have a lot of fun, it's true. But if we're going to get anywhere commercially, we can't be gallivanting around to people's houses at all hours of the day and night. I have to be at my office every morning when the cotton exchange opens in New York. Lightfoot, did you have anything to eat on the train? You don't sound like yourself. Now, now, don't you worry about me, honey. I had some right nice lamb chops in the diner. Oh, lamb chops. That's no nourishment. You come out in the kitchen with me for a minute and help me bring in a few little things I'll fix. Well, I... We can just leave Throckmorton here with the evening paper and he'll be perfectly happy. Huh? <laughs> well, honestly, I, I don't really feel the need of a thing, Lee. Oh, uh, Throckmorton. Martin, why don't you go out and get the things while I stay here with Mr. Dupree? Well, um, how would it be if we all went out and helped? Of course, let's all go. Oh, I was only joking, y'all. You boys just sit here and get acquainted and I'll fix everything. Oh, great. You sure you won't need any help? I'm quite sure. But don't you talk about me while I'm gone, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, wonderful girl, that Leela. One of the finest girls I've ever known. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, what do you gentlemen up here think about reconversion? Reconversion? Well, there's a lot of angles to it, son. If the government will give us a free reign on prices and let up on taxes... Yes, yes. business. Just look at all these lovely sandwiches. Wow, and stuffed celery. <laughs> my, my. Leela, you remembered my weakness for anchovies. Oh, Leela never forgets. Uh, just help yourselves, will you? There's salt and pepper napkins on the tray. I feel hungry, and I thought. So do I, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, my goodness, Lightfoot. What's the matter with me? Do you realize I haven't even asked you about Lula Jean? Isn't that terrible, Throckmorton? Mm. My best friend... How is Lulie Jean, Lightfoot? Uh, <clears throat> just uh, fine, Leela. Looks like we'll be married in November. Leela, try one of these ripe olives, Gildersleeve. Thanks. Uh, 
November? <laughs> November, you say, Lysa? Uh, yes, uh, there's a cotton fabric convention in Chicago in November, so I thought we could take our wedding trip down and kill two birds with one stone. Oh! Terribly sorry you've had so little time between trains, Lightfoot, but I'm glad you stopped over just the same. Leela, honey, I declare I said to myself, I just can't travel another mile in this Yankee country without talking to a pretty Georgia girl. Oh, you. Yeah, you we better get going, Leela. All right, run along, Strike Martin, but drive carefully. I don't want anything to happen to Lightfoot. Leela, I'm sure Mr. Gildersleeve is a fine driver. Goodbye now, honey, and take good care of yourself. And if you don't come down for the wedding, Lula Jean will never forgive you. I'll do my best, Lightfoot. Uh, goodbye. Mm. Goodbye. Good night, Leela. Come on, Dupree. I'll drive you through the business section on the way. I'm coming right along. Goodbye. I might have liked the honeymoon in Chicago. <laughs> Who's I? It's me, Leela. Uh, haven't got much time, Leela. Got to get Lightfoot to his train. Uh, but there's something I wanted to say to you all evening. You sure you want to say it now? I mean, you're sure this is the time? Yes, yes. It's important to both of us. What is it, Throckmorton? Don't put that money in television. Get out of my house! <laughs> more from the great Gildersleeve in just a few moments. One cheerful note you so often hear at breakfast tables throughout America is the sound of toast popping out of the toaster. My breakfast is never complete without it, but I know as well as you do it's the spread that makes hot, crisp toast taste so good. And I expect that's why so many families insist on parquet margarine, a spread with a flavor that's really fresh and sweet and delicate. Millions of families prefer Parquet Margarine to any other brand. And for very good reason, too. Because Parquet's fine, fresh flavor is still unmatched. So buy a package of this delicious, economical spread. P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. It's high in food energy value and contains important vitamin A. Try delicious, nourishing Parquet on your breakfast toast tomorrow. <laughs> You know, it's a funny thing, little foot. I mean, light foot. <laughs> uh, when I saw you walk in there tonight, you know, I had the idea that maybe you were interested in Leela Ransom. <laughs> you know something? I had the same idea about you. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> Just a neighbor, old man. Well, you know the old saying. Love thy neighbor. <laughs> Very good. I'll kill that kid. <laughs> good night, everybody. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It was written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. You can just bet the cheese-flavored dishes will make a hit with your family and guests when they're made with delicious Pabstet cheese food. Pabstet melts luscious smooth into an appetizing cheese sauce for eggs, fish, and macaroni. Pabstet also makes a grand sandwich spread, toasts to perfection, slices neatly for serving with pie or fruit desserts. Pabstet is nourishing, easy to digest, a treat on all occasions. So buy both varieties of this delicious cheese food, Golden Cheddar Pabstet and Pimento Pabstet. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Yes, I think I might have something to say about it. 
think you might have asked me. I don't have to ask you, my boy, because you're going, and that's all there is to it. Gosh, there goes my Saturday. All right, now you're going out and rake those leaves. Okay, but I need somebody to help me. Why can't Marge help me? She's not doing anything. I'm busy. Yeah, reading a book. Go rake the leaves, Leroy. (laughs) I don't see how she gets to read at the table. You'll never let me. He's right, my dear. You know the rule, no reading at the table. What about you? This is different. I'm reading the newspaper. Merely trying to keep abreast of the times. (laughs) She's still reading, (laughs) Unc. What's the book, Marjorie? The Art of Ballet Dancing. Tweet, tweet. Leroy, what did I tell you? You go out and rake the leaves. Well, I don't see why I have to be the only one that ever does any work around here. Now, that is a gross misstatement of fact. Well, if anybody ever caught you lifting a finger around here, they'd drop dead. Oh, <laughs> I'll leave it to anybody. I'll leave it to Bertie. How about it, Bertie? What's that, Leroy? Yes, Bertie, how about it? Don't I do twice as much work around here as Unc? Well, Bertie? I pay it. <laughs> She's afraid if she tells the truth, you'll fire her. Uh, it sounds like a swell party. You think the magician will need an assistant? You know, somebody like me that knows his stuff? I don't know. I want to play. Sure, Craigie, old boy, let's play. What do you want to play, huh? Oh, wait, here comes Unc. Boy, now we'll have a bonfire. Hey, you boys, stand back. Here, get out of the way. I thought I told you and Craig to play. Well, we are. We were just about to start, weren't we, Craigie? We were just deciding what to play. I know what I want to do. Okay, what is it? Let's run through this pile of leaves. <laughs> I don't think that's a very good idea, Craig. I want to run through the leaves. Come on, Leroy. Gosh, I don't know. Now, you boys find something sensible to do, huh? There are plenty of nice games. I want to run through the leaves. You must not run through the leaves, Craig. I've spent all morning raking these leaves together. Come on, Leroy. Let's run through the leaves. No, I don't think we'd better, Craig. Well, I'm going to... Come on, it's fun. Don't do it, Craig. Here I come. Whee! Oh, boy, you little... Come here. Come here, you little rascal. Oh, I'll get that kid. Well, hello, Craig. Hello, Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, boy. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> I was just escorting little Craigie across the street. <laughs> So long, Uncle. Hey, goodbye, Leroy. Have a good time. Don't worry. Uh, say, wait a sec, will you, Mrs. Bullard? I want to tell my sister something. Say, Marge, you know I'm going to Bullard's after all. I know. Well, the only thing is, Uncle worked pretty hard trying to fix up all this stale stuff over here. So, pretend you think it's fun, will you? All right. Okay. Goodbye, Marge. Goodbye, Uncle. And now, a word from our sponsor, the Kraft Foods Company. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Lung. Uh, Lang. Uh, <laughs> it just happens that the sponsor's given me this time this evening, so shove over. Well, go ahead. Get off the property. <laughs> Folks, the war is over, but there's still millions of our men in the service who are a long way from home. They aren't going to get home for Thanksgiving or for Christmas or for a long time after that. If we can't bring all the boys home, let's do what we can to bring a little bit of home to them. We can do that through the National War Fund which provides them with movies and entertainment and such other comforts as can be brought into camp life. Of course, the War Fund also provides for the relief of our allies abroad and for many important community needs at home. I don't know any way that you can make a dollar go farther or do more good. So when they come around to ask you to contribute, be generous, will you? Good night, everybody. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Now, a 
wonderful help in menu planning. It's Pabstet, the delicious cheddar cheese food that's so nourishing, so easy to digest, so easy to serve in a hundred appetizing ways. Pabstet spreads, slices, toasts to perfection for sandwiches and snacks. And Pabstet melts into a luscious golden cheese sauce to pour over tasty dishes of macaroni, rice, eggs, and fish. Yes, there are a hundred delightful ways to enjoy Pabstet's rich, mellow cheddar cheese flavor. So buy both varieties of this delicious cheese food, Golden Cheddar Pabstet and Pimento Pabstet. This is the National... Today? Nope. Tooth powder and mouthwash? No. I have a special on shaving lotion. Peavy, will you hurry it up? All I want is a nail polish, and I don't even need that. Just wrap it up and don't talk. Don't say a word. Well, well, I won't. Well, don't. Well, I won't. <laughs> Trouble with you is you've always got to have the last word. Well, no, I wouldn't. There you go. He got <laughs> But she never thought I could make it so fast. Well, I do. Here I am again, Leela. Oh. Uh, yeah. uh, Martin, did you go to the drugstore? Sure I did. Here's a nail polish. Oh, yes, thank you. Well, do come in. I'm freezing. Great. Where's, uh, what's his name, Dupree? I don't know. I've been expecting him ever since 7.30. Uh, uh, sit down, won't you? You bet. Why don't we sit on the couch? Uh, I don't think I'll sit down just yet, Throckmorton. I'll just stand here by the fire. Hmm. You look nice there, too. Firelight gleams in your hair. Puts color in your cheeks. What did you say? I said the firelight gleams in your hair. Puts color in your cheeks. Oh, thank you, honey. <laughs> Matter with you, Leela? Don't you feel well? Why, yes, Rockmorton. I feel fine. You're acting kind of strange, as if I wasn't here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just out here. The letter on the mantle, Leroy. Dinner in about ten minutes, Miss Gill, please. All right, Bertie. Better get ready for dinner, Leroy. I am. Leroy, I said put the letter on the mantle. That's what I'm doing. You were doing nothing of the kind. You were holding the envelope up to the light. I saw you. We don't read other people's mail, my boy. It's not only bad manners, it's a criminal offense. Besides, it isn't done. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Could you make out anything? <laughs> Too thick. Oh, uh, put it on the mantel, and I'll take it over to Mrs. Ransom after dinner. Why, it's Rock Martin. Ooh, hello, Leela. I saw your lights on, so I knew you were home. I just this minute got in. Do come inside. You're letting in the cold. Well, it's pretty late, but if you insist. Just came over to bring you a letter, Leela. Letter? Uh-huh. The postman left it while you were out. Special delivery. Here. Now, who could be writing to me? Spe Throckmorton! Oh, Throckmorton, I'm going to have to sit down. Oh? What's the matter? It's from Lightfoot. Who's Lightfoot? An Indian? No. <laughs> I told you about him. Lightfoot Dupree. The man who was engaged to my very best friend. <laughs> Well, then don't advertise him. The whole thing is very misleading, Phoebe, if not unethical. It's misrepresentation. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> no decent drugstore would display anything in its window that it wasn't willing to sell. Have you seen Beckman's window? Certainly. See the big plaster foot he's got in there with the bunions that light up? <laughs> well, yes. Have you tried to buy that? <laughs> well, ye gods, who'd want to buy it? Same thing. All right, keep your candy. I'll give you $2 for it. Mr. Gilbert's baby, right? It's not for myself, Peavy. I want to buy it for Leroy. For a little boy's Christmas, Peavy. The one thing that'd make him happy. The one thing that it. Wait a minute. What is it? I forgot. What? I'm mad at Leroy. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, that must be Miss Goodwood. I'll go. Now, take it easy, Bertie. Let's keep our heads here. 
Marjorie, remember what I told you. You've told me so many things I can't possibly remember them. Well, just try to make a good impression, that's all. Good evening, Miss Goodwin. Good evening, Bertie. How are you? Just fine, Miss Goodwin. Take your thing. Thank you. Where is that Leroy? Seven o'clock and he's not home yet. If I lay my hands on him, I'll... Oh, hello, Eve. <laughs> Good evening, Morton and Marjorie. Hello, Miss Goodwin. Oh, I believe we have. What color? I don't know what color. Any color. Is uh, this for yourself or for a friend? <laughs> for a friend. What do you think? Well, I wondered. A lady, I presume. It's for Mrs. Ransom. Oh. She didn't like the polish she bought yesterday? Did she buy polish yesterday? Certainly, I sold it to her myself. Confound it. I knew she was sending me down here in a wild goose chase. Makes me so darn mad. What makes women behave the way they do, Peavy? I don't know, Mr. Gildersleeve, unless it's men. You... <laughs> Grab me some nail polish, will you, Peavy, and let me get out of here. Yes, sir. What color did you say? I didn't. What colors have you got? Well, they run the gamut all the way from pink to rose. Here's the chart. Well, pick any color. I can't tell one from another. In between you and me, neither can I, but... <laughs> women come in here and they study over the chart and they ask my advice. And I give it to them. <laughs> Peavy, you're a cynic. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Just practical. Yes. Yeah, how about this color, Mr. Gildersleeve? That's a nice color. Goes with everything. <laughs> Bright enough for evening, not too bright for daytime. You can wear it. You've already it's... told me, Peavy, that you know nothing about it, so spare me the sales talk. I guess the color won't scare anybody. Wrap it up. Yes, sir. Need any razor blades today? Nope. Tooth pop. I'm coming! Uh, so is Christmas. Yes? Who is it, Bertie? Who is it, Bertie? Who is it, Bertie? Uh, special Bertie? delivery. I got a letter for Special it. delivery? Special Right now. No, 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 no. This is for the party next door. Only she ain't home, so I, I thought if you wouldn't mind giving it to her. Norbert, is it for me? No, it's for Miss Ransom. Oh, well, she doesn't live here. She lives next door. Yeah, I know. I was just over there, but she ain't home, well, so. It's special for me, by any chance? No, Leroy, it's for Miss Ransom. Oh, well, you got the wrong place, bud. She lives next door. I know. I was just over there. Be right there. You sign for it, Marjorie. Nobody don't need sign for it. Uh, uh, all I'm asking delivery, is... eh? Well, I wonder who could be... Oh, this is for Mrs. Ransom. I'm afraid you've got the wrong address, my friend. Mrs. Ransom lives next door, 269. <laughs> right across the lot there. Hey, look. Give me back the letter. I'll take it back to the office. He was just over there, Mr. Gillsleeve. Miss Ransom ain't home. In that case, why don't you leave the letter here and let us give it to her when she comes home? <laughs> That's all I'm asking. Well, all right. Jeepers. Why doesn't the man make himself clear? The letter on the mantle, Leroy. Dinner in about ten minutes, Miss Gill, please. All right, Bertie. You better get ready for dinner, Leroy. I am. Leroy, I said put the letter on the mantle. That's what I'm doing. You were doing nothing of the kind. You were holding the envelope up to the light. I saw you. We don't read other people's mail, my... Ah, smell those roasting apples, Leroy. Don't they smell good? I guess so. I'll be done in a minute. Time to pop the popcorn. Where is the popcorn, Marjorie? What? I said, where's the popcorn? Oh, there's the box up in the mantel. Gee, we've had that stuff for years. Oh, no matter. It's always good. <laughs> I'd like to see you take a little more interest in our picnic, my dear. We can't have any fun if you're just going to sit there reading a book. We can't have any fun anyway. <laughs> we can't have any if we don't try, my boy. Put your book away, my dear. We're going to make popcorn. Well, we can't all do it. Let Leroy do it. Leroy's going to toast marshmallows. You make the popcorn. Marshmallows. Popcorn. Here, Leroy, here's a toasting fork. Nice long one. Here are the marshmallows. Now, Marjorie, we'll pour some corn into the popper. There. Now, in no time at all, those little kernels will be big, white, crunchy tidbits. You sound just like a radio announcer. Uh, huh? Here. You have to shake the popper over the fire, my dear. Okay. Leroy, you take the... Leroy, what are you looking at now? The kids are starting to arrive. There's Donald Kelsey and Robert Rosenblatt. Leroy, what do you care who goes to their old party? We're having our own party here. There's Peter Fisher. There's Piggy. Stop looking out of that window, Leroy. I forbid you to look out of that window anymore. Oh, gosh, I want to see the magician. The magician. Leroy, what do you think? The roast apples are done. How about a nice roast apple, huh? I'm not very... Come downstairs. We're going to have a picnic. <laughs> Ah, smell 
smell those roasting apples, Leroy? Don't they smell good? I guess so. I'll be done in a minute. Time to pop the popcorn. Where is the popcorn, Marjorie? What? I said, where's the popcorn? Oh, there's the box up in the mantel. Gee, we've had that stuff for years. Oh, no matter. It's always good. <laughs> I'd like to see you take a little more interest in our picnic, my dear. We can't have any fun if you're just going to sit there reading a book. We can't have any fun anyway. <laughs> we can't have any if we don't try, my boy. Put your book away, my dear. We're going to make popcorn. Well, we can't all do it. Let Leroy do it. Leroy's going to toast marshmallows. You make the popcorn. Marshmallows. Popcorn. Here, Leroy. Here's a toasting fork. Nice long one. Here are the marshmallows. Now, Marjorie, we'll pour some corn into the popper. There. Now, in no time at all, those little kernels will be big, white, crunchy tidbits. You sound just like a radio announcer. Huh? Here. You have to shake the popper over the fire, my dear. Okay. Leroy, you take the... Leroy, what are you looking at now? The kids are starting to arrive. There's Donald Kelsey and Robert Rosenblatt. Leroy, what do you care who goes to their old party? We're having our own party here. But what's the matter with me? Do you realize I haven't even asked you about Lula Jean? Isn't that terrible, Throckmorton? Mm. My best friend... How is Lulie Jean, Lightfoot? Uh, <clears throat> just uh, fine, Leela. Looks like we'll be married in November. Leela, try one of these ripe olives, Gildersleeve. Thanks. Ah, uh, November? <laughs> November, you say, Lightfoot? Uh, yes, uh, there's a cotton fabric convention in Chicago in November, so I thought we could take our wedding trip down and kill two birds with one stone. Oh. Terribly sorry you've had so little time between trains, Lightfoot, but I'm glad you stopped over just the same. Leela, honey, I declare I said to myself, I just can't travel another mile in this Yankee country without talking to a pretty Georgia girl. Oh, you. Uh, we better get going, Leela. All right, run along, Throckmorton, but drive carefully. I don't want anything to happen to Lightfoot. Leela, I'm sure Mr. Gildersleeve is a fine driver. Goodbye now, honey, and take good care of yourself. And if you don't come down for the wedding, Lula Jean will never forgive you. I'll do my best, Lightfoot. Uh, goodbye. Mm. Goodbye. Good night, Leela. Turn to help around the house. Acquire the proper work habits. That's important. I had to learn to work when I was a boy. Through with your coffee now, Mr. Gilsley? Yes, Bertie. What's on your mind? I didn't say nothing. No, but you're thinking something. <laughs> Now, what is it? Well, I was just thinking that's an awful big yard for such a little boy to have to rake. Oh, all right, I'll rake the yard myself. Ye gods! Rake, rake, rake. Where does it get you? Like bailing water with a sieve. Sure, sure, get a little place raked clean and more of them fall down. The more you rake, the more there are. Oh, pfft, darn wind. That's right, go on, blow them all over the lot. Well... What you doing, Gilda? <laughs> what does it look like I'm doing, Hooker? Baking a cake. I never thought I'd live to see the day. Dupree's here yet. Uh, here she comes. Well, I did... Oh, Throckmorton. <laughs> ah, 
Yeah, hello, Leela. You're early, aren't you? I don't know, am I? Well, of course you are. I said 8 o'clock, and it's only about 20 minutes off. Gracious, I'm hardly dressed. Oh, well, as long as I'm here. No, Throckmorton. I've got to finish dressing. Well, I'll wait downstairs here. No, please. I... Throckmorton, I just thought of something. Why, it's the luckiest thing you came out of. Yeah, why is it? <laughs> I just remembered I haven't got a drop of nail polish in the house. I wonder if you'd mind running down to the drugstore for me. <sighs> nail polish? That takes hours to put on. Well, it's not for tonight. I'll need it first thing in the morning. Be a lamb now, Throckmorton. Run down and get me a bottle. By the time you get back, I'll be all dressed and everything. Well, uh, what color? Mr. Peavy will know, Throckmorton, but hurry. I wonder if she's trying to get rid of me. Come. I got a shotgun right upstairs in my bedroom closet. Let him come. Mr. Gildersleeve, nobody is coming. What's that? I say nobody is coming. Oh, no. <laughs> of course not. How did we get started on communism? I don't know. I said something about the weather. I believe I remarked that it was a nice day. Nice day for raking leaves. Yes, it is. Fine day. Well, I guess you'll want to be getting on with it. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Gilder. Uh, goodbye, Peavy. Glad you dropped by. Where's that rake? Oh! Who left that upside down? <laughs> Hello, Craig. Hi. What you doing? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you, Craig. I'm going to ask you to guess. Where's Leroy? I want him to play with me. Leroy? He's around someplace, I guess. I want him to play with me. Well, come to think of it, I guess he went downtown. No, no. Here he comes now. Hello, Leroy. You want to play with me? Oh, hi, Craig. No, I don't want to play. I'll see you when the party starts. I want to play now. Scram, kid. <laughs> Leroy. <laughs> Leroy, I'm surprised at you. That's no way. If Craig wants to play, we'll confound it play. Oh, for corn's sake. Hey, that's quite a pile of leaves you got there, Unc. Just shows what steady work will do, my boy. What are you going to do, burn them? Yeah, you got a match? What would I be doing with matches? I don't know, but I've always... What about it? As her financial advisor and attorney, naturally, I've tried to arrange her affairs so that she'd be in a position to pay the loan off. Well, how's she doing? She's got the money, but now she doesn't want to use it to pay off the note. She wants to invest in television stock. Oh, for goodness sake. Gilda, you don't know what I go through with Leela. She's a lovely creature and all that, but by ginger. Well, I'll speak to her about this. Oh, if you would, Throckmorton, I'd be grateful. The hours I spend explaining things to her... Uh, she isn't in any financial difficulty, is she, Horace? Well, she's not too... Oh, she'd be all right, except she's continually doing something foolish. When can you see her, Gilda? I'm afraid she's going to plunge into television any minute if we don't stop her. Well, I'm seeing her this evening, Judge, as a matter of fact. Although I don't know how easy it'll be to bring this thing up. Why not? Well, she's got this southerner coming to see her. Wants me to meet him for some reason. Southerner? Yeah, some flame of hers passing through town. Is this fellow interested in her? I suppose so. He's come all the way up here. Maybe you'll marry her. I wish the dickens somebody would marry her and straighten her out instead of me. Well, I don't think it's your job to... <laughs> I don't think it's your job to find the man. You're not jealous, are you, Gildy? No, you old goat, I'm not jealous. <laughs> but that's no reason to marry her off to every Tom, Dick, and Harry that comes through town. I don't see you marrying her. You're just a dog in the manger, that's what you are. <laughs> I'm no... Pretty quiet in there. I wonder if Dupree's here yet. Uh, here she comes. Well, I did... Oh, Throckmorton. <laughs> yeah, hello, Leela. You're early, aren't you? I don't know, am I? Well, of course you are. I said 8 o'clock, and it's only about 20 minutes off. Gracious, I'm hardly dressed. Oh, well, as long as I'm here. No, Throckmorton. I've got to finish dressing. Well, I'll wait downstairs here. No, please, I... Throckmorton, I just thought of something. Why, it's the luckiest thing you came out of. Yeah, why is it? <laughs> I just remembered I haven't got a drop of nail polish in the house. I wonder if you'd mind running down to the drugstore for me. <laughs> nail polish? That takes hours to put on. 
Well, it's not for tonight. I'll need it first thing in the morning. Be a lamb now, Throckmorton. Run down and get me a bottle. By the time you get back, I'll be all dressed and everything. Well, uh, what color? Mr. Peavy will know, Throckmorton, but hurry. I wonder if she's trying to get rid of me. Hello, Mr. Jemison. Hello, PV. You got any nail polish? You know, I had the idea that maybe you were interested in Leela Ransom. <laughs> you know something? I had the same idea about you. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> Just a neighbor, old man. Well, you know the old saying. Love thy neighbor. <laughs> Very good. I'll kill that kid. <laughs> good night, everybody. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. You can just bet the cheese-flavored dishes will make a hit with your family and guests when they're made with delicious Pabstep cheese food. Pabstep melts luscious smooth into an appetizing cheese sauce for eggs, fish, and macaroni. Pabstep also makes a grand sandwich spread, toasts to perfection, slices neatly for serving with pie or fruit desserts. Pabstep is nourishing, easy to digest, a treat on all occasions. So buy both varieties of this delicious cheese food, Golden Cheddar Pabstet and Pimento Pabstet. Stop looking out of that window, Leroy. I forbid you to look out of that window anymore. Oh, gosh, I want to see the magician. The magician? Leroy, what do you think? The roast apples are done. How about a nice roast apple, huh? I'm not very hungry. You'll be hungry when you taste this. Where's the plate? I'll pull one apple out of the fire just for you. Bertie, bring me a plate, quick. Yes, sir, right away. How's the popcorn coming along, my dear? It isn't. Huh? Well, shake it. Never get any place just holding it still. Here's a bracelet, Mr. Gillsleeve. Is that all you wanted? That's fine. Thank you, Bertie. Here, I'll have to brush the ashes off this. There. Now, Leroy, you just sink your teeth into that and tell me if you've ever tasted anything finer. Okay. Careful. Hot. Yeah. Better blow on it. Okay. Now. Why, it tastes just like baked apple. It does? And I hate baked apples. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Well, we'll forget the baked apples. Let's get back to the marshmallow and the popcorn. How's it coming, Marjorie? It's dead, Uncle Mort. I think it's too old to pop. Nonsense, my dear. Here, let me give it a shake. Hmm. Devil's the matter with it. Come on, you little pop. <laughs> I'm not putting the stuff in these poppers anymore. Pour in another batch, my dear. But, Uncle Moore... Do a vision stock. Oh, for goodness sake. Gilda, you don't know what I go through with Leela. She's a lovely creature and all that, but by ginger. Well, I'll speak to her about this. Oh, if you would, Throckmorton, I'd be grateful. The hours I spend explaining things to her... Uh, she isn't in any financial difficulty, is she, Horace? Well, she's not too... Oh, well, she'd be all right, except she's continually doing something foolish. When can you see her, Gilly? I'm afraid she's going to plunge into television any minute if we don't stop her. Well, I'm seeing her this evening, Judge, as a matter of fact. Although I don't know how easy it'll be to bring this thing up. Why not? Well, she's got this southerner coming to see her. Wants me to meet him for some reason. Southerner? Yeah, some flame of hers passing through town. Is this fellow interested in her? I suppose so. He's come all the way up here. Maybe you'll marry her. I wish the Dickens somebody would marry her and straighten her out instead of me. Well, I don't think it's your job to... I don't think it's your job to find the man. You're not jealous, are you, Gildy? No, you old goat, I'm not jealous. <laughs> but that's no reason to marry her off to every Tom, Dick, and Harry that comes through town. I don't see you marrying her. You're just a dog in the manger. That's what you are. <laughs> I'm no dog, you dog. And don't call this house a manger. Oh, you make me sick. 
Well, go on over there and hang around. It won't do you any good. What do you mean by that? I'll bet Leela wants this fella, and I'll bet she married. That's what you think. I'll show It's important to both of us. What is it, Throckmorton? Don't put that money in television. Get out of my We'll hear more from the great Gildersleeve in just a few moments. One cheerful note you so often hear at breakfast tables throughout America is the sound of toast popping out of the toaster. My breakfast is never complete without it. But I know as well as you do, it's the spread that makes hot, crisp toast taste so good. And I expect that's why so many families insist on parquet margarine, a spread with a flavor that's really fresh and sweet and delicate. Millions of families prefer parquet margarine to any other brand, and for very good reason, too, because parquet's fine, fresh flavor is still unmatched. So buy a package of this delicious, economical spread, P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. It's high in food energy value and contains important vitamin A. Try delicious, nourishing parquet on your breakfast toast tomorrow. You know, it's a funny thing, little foot. I mean, light foot. <laughs> Here by the fire. Mm. You look nice there, too. Firelight gleams in your hair. Puts color in your cheeks. What did you say? I said the firelight gleams in your hair. Puts color in your cheeks. Oh, thank you, honey. <laughs> matter with you, Leela? Don't you feel well? Yes, Rockmorton, I feel fine. You're acting kind of strange, as if I wasn't here. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just absent-minded. Now, tell me all about what you've been doing today. Well, let's see. This morning... Oh, that must be Lightfoot. Huh? Sit right there, Rockmorton, you hear? Lightfoot, it's you. Leela, you sure are a lovely sight to a lonesome stranger. Oh. I salute you with a kiss I brought all the way from Savannah. How do they do it? Oh, you like for two months, and I've got company. Come in, darling. Just put your bags here in the hall. There. Now, come in here and meet Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, 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 well? Lightfoot, I want you to meet one of my oldest and best friends in Summerfield, Throckmorton Gildersleeve. This is Lightfoot Dupree, Throckmorton. Uh, glad to know you, Mr. Dupree. Mr. Gildersleeve, it's an honor and a pleasure to make your acquaintance, sir. Uh, I just know you two boys are going to like each other a lot, don't you think? Uh, here she comes. Well, I did... Oh, Throckmorton. Yeah, hello, Leela. You're early, aren't you? I don't know, am I? Well, of course you are. I said 8 o'clock and it's only about 20 minutes off. Gracious, I'm hardly dressed. Oh, well, as long as I'm here. No, Throckmorton. I've got to finish dressing. Well, I'll wait downstairs here. No, please. I... Throckmorton, I just thought of something. Why, it's the luckiest thing you came early. Yeah, why is it? <laughs> I just remembered I haven't got a drop of nail polish in the house. I wonder if you'd mind running down to the drugstore for me. <sighs> nail polish? That takes hours to put on. Well, it's not for tonight. I'll need it first thing in the morning. Be a lamb now, Throckmorton. Run down and get me a bottle. By the time you get back, I'll be all dressed and everything. Well, uh, what color? Mr. Peavy will know, Throckmorton, but hurry. I wonder if she's trying to get rid of me. <laughs> Hello, PV. You got any nail polish? I'm in a hurry. Nail polish? Sure. I believe we have. What color? I don't know what color. Any color. Is uh, this for yourself or for a friend? <laughs> for a friend? What do you. The great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. In the meantime, I'd like to ask this lady a question. 
Which do you like best for breakfast, toast or sweet rolls? Why, I prefer toast. And I like sweet rolls. Now, uh, what's your choice for dinner, bread or muffins? Oh, I'll take muffins. And I'd rather have bread. <laughs> we just can't seem to agree, can we? Mm, I think we can. At least we can agree that it takes a good spread to bring out the flavor of all kinds of bread. Yes, I'll agree with you on that. By the way, have you ever tasted parquet margarine? Yes, I have. Do you like it? Oh, I certainly do. And so do I. There, you see, we agree again. And that's something on which millions of people agree. Parquet margarine is preferred by millions to any other brand because it's still unmatched for fresh, sweet, delicate flavor. If you haven't tried parquet, buy some soon and discover how good it tastes on bread, toast, and rolls. And remember, parquet is only about half the price of costly spreads. Be sure to ask your food dealer for parquet, the spread that tastes so good. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by Kraft. Thank <laughs> you.